It's episode 94 of the Keto for Women show. You're listening to the Keto for Women show. This podcast provides the tools you need to create your own expression of a healthy ketogenic lifestyle so you can stop obsessing and start living. I'm your host and nutritionist, Sean Miner. Now let's get on with the show. Before we get any further into this episode, I want to take a quick break to shout out our friends over at Artisana Organics because guess what? They are coming out with a brand new nut butter line called Clean Keto, and they are absolutely phenomenal. You guys are going to love these things. The best part, they actually live up to the label. They are truly clean keto products with only the best high quality ingredients. As of now, there are two different varieties. One is a Brazil nut and hemp blend, which is my personal favorite. And the other is a macadamia and coconut blend, also delicious. As you all know, Artisana really sticks out to me as someone who is doing it right in the nut butter space. They use only organic, raw, properly sourced nuts. They don't add any additional fillers or oils to their products, and they taste so, so good. You can actually taste the quality with every spoonful of nut butter. My recommendation here would be to top off your favorite super dark chocolate with either one of these clean keto nut butters, or you could try adding them to your yogurt, smoothies, chia seed pudding, something like that too. And of course, you cannot go wrong with just grabbing a spoon and taking it straight from the jar. The Keto for Women squad is the first to know about these new nut butters from Artisana, and you ladies will be the first to get your hands on them. In order to do so, make sure you head over to artisanaorganics.com and pre-order your new clean keto nut butters. Use code KETO, the number four women, to get 15% off your online order. That's artisanaorganics.com and use coupon code KETO, the number four women, for 15% off your order. I cannot wait for you guys to try these new nut butters. And a special thank you, of course, to Artisana for helping this episode of the Keto for Women show come to air. Hey, hey, friends. Welcome back. Thanks, as always, for joining me on this episode of Keto for Women. Today, it's just me chatting with you all once again, and I'm telling you some things I'm afraid to tell you or have been afraid to tell you until now. And you know, I'm pretty open. I'm a very open book, especially here on the podcast, over on Instagram. I tell it like it is. I don't hide anything. But there are definitely some things that I've had going on in my head lately that I have been afraid to mention or I just haven't mentioned, kind of kept it quiet. And so we're going to go through. I have 10 things that we're going to go through today that I'm afraid to tell you. Some of them are things about me. Some of them are things I think about you, and some of them are things I think about keto and or this podcast. I'm really looking forward to this. I've been wanting to do this episode for a while. In fact, I had some of these notes written already, gosh, probably months ago, and then never got around to doing the episode. Maybe it's because I was still afraid to tell you, but now it's a new book. We're turning over a new leaf here on Keto for Women, which starts with me being a fully open, present person for you all. Before we get into that, just a few quick updates. The Keto for Women Best of series starts next week. As I mentioned in last episode, in case you missed it, I'm taking a little bit of a leave of absence from the Keto for Women show prior to the Keto for Women show, which I don't think a lot of you know this. I had a totally different podcast that I did with my friend Meg Dahl. We were just two nutritionists chatting all things nutrition. I did that for over two years too. And now we're approaching two years on Keto for Women and I've never ever taken a week off. I've always had a recording come out every single week. And I just feel like it's a good time. I think a lot of you know, personally, I'm going through just a lot of stress stuff with my home and an unexpected 
construction zone that's now happening with my kitchen. It's just been a lot. I have a lot of new things going on for the business, which I'm in kind of creation mode for you all right now. And in order to really fully embrace that and get those thoughts out, I need to focus on one thing. And so it's going to be that thing for just a few weeks. So I'm going to spend five weeks before we get to episode number 100 of the Keto for Women show, giving you all replays of my favorite and your favorite episodes that have happened within the past 94 episodes on Keto for Women, so over the past two years. Now, like I mentioned, you probably have heard these episodes before, but it's been a while. And For me, and I think you will agree, repeating episodes, especially if it has been a length of time in between, you just pick up on some really different things or you're at a different point in your keto journey, in your health journey, in your diet journey, and now it just rings a different bell. It means something different to you. So that's where replaying these five episodes that were really important to you and really important to me will come in handy, I promise. So make sure you stick around over the next five weeks and tune back in to those episodes. There are a few with some of my favorite guests that really laid down the law, I think, when it comes to keto information about women specifically. And then there's some where it's just me talking about a specific topic that you all really need to hear. You needed to hear it back then. You still need to hear it today. So that's what we're going to do over the next five weeks. And then episode 100, I will be back. We'll be back in action. It'll be beginning of May. It'll be spring. It'll feel warm. I'll have all this stuff that's currently inside my brain out on paper, and I'll feel like a whole new person. So I'm looking forward to that. I know for sure I'm going to miss talking to you all every single week. So I already can tell you I'm looking forward to getting back to it in just a short five weeks. Along that time, while I'm gone, I will also be doing a meetup in Denver. It will be at the Just Be Kitchen restaurant coming up on May 5th. So I just want to make sure you know that now to be on the lookout over the next few weeks for a place to RSVP over on Eventbrite. I don't believe it's up just yet, but you can be on the lookout over on my Instagram at Sean Miner or Facebook at Sean Miner Health for that info. So you can sign up if you do want to meet up and you live in the Denver Boulder metro area. It will be really fun. Looking forward to meeting you all in person the best time ever. And then lastly, I've mentioned before that the Fapperny Female Project is not coming up in the group format until July. So we have a few more months taking a little bit of a breather from that as well, again, to get this mush that's in my brain out on paper for a new creative concept I'm coming up with. But in the meantime, The self-study is available if you want to get started on your intuitive keto journey. Right now, you can do so with the self-study, and it also just got a facelift. So it's brand new format, really beautiful layout, much easier to navigate if you already are in the course. Maybe it's time to go back and give yourself a little refresher, or you can get started on it anytime you want. It is always there for you over on my website, seanminer.com. You can head to the link where it says Fat Burning a Female Self-Study and enroll there right now. Or if you want to be part of the class, the big group project in July, make sure you put your name on the email list so you are the first to know when it does open. But more on that coming up in a few months. We still got some time in between. All right. Are we ready to get into these things I'm afraid to tell you? I'll actually say before I get started on my list here, I got this idea from a podcaster that I've listened to for a long time. The podcast is The Lively Show, and the podcaster is Just Lively, and she's great. I've been following her for a long time. She's deep in the world of intuition and law of attraction and universe talk. So if that's of interest to you, head over there and check her out. She's awesome. But she's done several podcasts with the title, Things I'm Afraid to Tell You. And they were always really great, really informative podcast episodes where you got to know the 
host on a different level. And that's what I want to do here with you. Again, I think a lot of you already feel like you know me pretty well, like we're friends. I'm a very open book. I always have been. And today will be no exception. But there's just some little things that maybe I haven't shared or just haven't brought up that I want to make sure you know about me so that you know that I'm human and that I am very much still in this process along with all of you. So these first few are going to be things about me that I've been afraid to tell you. So the first thing is that I look in the mirror and don't always love what I see. So I know I talk a lot about here on Instagram everywhere about body positivity and self-love and self-acceptance and how it doesn't always have to be hatred that you feel when you look into the mirror. And that's actually something that's a very powerful and therapeutic thing for you to start approaching in your own life is to change how you view yourself, the things you say to yourself in the mirror. And back in the episode where I talked about how my mindset changed a few episodes ago when I was sick and how that then propelled me into wellness much quicker than it would have if I hadn't worked on my mindset, that was one of my steps that I took was I stopped being mean to myself when I looked at myself in the mirror, even though my body was not anything like I had ever seen my body to be. However, now I have gotten to a place where I am confident in my skin, I'm strong, I work out regularly, I eat well, I nourish my body, and I feel good most of the time. But there are still times and there will always be times when I look in the mirror and I pick myself apart. I think that's honestly a normal part about being a woman. It's not easy to change your mindset to not do that. We are our own worst critics and we always will be. So it's just, I want you all to know it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress for me. It's probably going to be a work in progress for you. I don't know if there's any female out there who looks at their self in the mirror every single time and loves every single ounce of it. Yes, I love me. I love my body. I love what it's done for me. I love how healthy I have gotten because I've taken care of my body. But I still nitpick on occasion and you will too. And that's okay. I think the big piece that has changed for me is that I notice it now. So I notice when I look at myself in the mirror and I start picking apart my wrinkles or my fat rolls or whatever it may be that day, I notice. And what I do is I just leave the scene. I don't give it any further attention. I realize this is what I'm doing. It's that kind of day. I'm on that kind of path. So I'm just going to shut off the light and walk out of the room. I'm not going to continue on this path. I stop. I go about my business. I enjoy my life. I don't look at the mirror that day. It's that easy. And I think that's kind of the biggest help that has been for me is knowing it's going to happen, but having the tools in place to shut it down, essentially, as soon as I can. But I do think it's really important for you all to know it does still happen to everybody. So don't think you have to be perfect. I do it all the time. I don't like what I see in the mirror every single day. It's okay. All right. The second thing I've been afraid to tell you is that when I feel fat, My first instinct is to eat less and work out harder still to this day. Again, this is something that we have all just been wired to think this way for so long that it is such a process to get out of that spiral. It has been ingrained in my head, especially as someone who has been in the fitness industry for longer than I've been in any other industry. That's something that I had in front of my face in my brain 24-7 during that time. And it was a pretty important time in my life in my early 20s into mid-30s. So it's something that stuck with me and it still does. It's only been a few years now that I know that's not how it works. I've seen it with my own two eyes. I've gone down that path and it hasn't worked. I know many of you have been down that path and are still trying to go down that path and it's not working. It does not work. And that is something that I know 
but it's still just so ingrained that I have to talk myself out of it. So again, I have now created a mechanism for myself where I can understand that that's what I'm doing and realize that that's what's going on in my brain, that it's just this old pattern coming back in and it's not my reality. So of course, I talk myself out of it. I don't actually do those things, thank goodness, but it does still pop up. Again, this is something that I want you to know. I'm human, just like you, and I still have these same tendencies. It's a hard path to go down to get rid of them entirely. I don't know if any of us ever will get away from that mentality of, oh, just eat less, move more. How long have we been hearing that? How many years from how many people have we heard that? And it's still out there today. It's not going anywhere. So it's up to you and it's up to me to do the work, to reprogram, to repattern our thinking. And I'm currently in that process and I think it might be a process forever. It's part of the process. So it's more about having that mechanism, having that fallback where you can talk yourself out of it, where you can see that that's what you're doing and realize that that's not coming from your true intuitive sense. Again, just a little reminder that I'm real and you are too, and it's okay to not be perfect. The number three reason that I'm not perfect and things I just, I don't want to say that I'm afraid to tell you because I've talked about this before, uh, especially over on Instagram, I have talked about it, but it's more so just things I don't bring up that often, which is that I still use toxic products. Now, yes, we've talked about here on the Keto for Women show all about toxicity, changing over to non-toxic products for your skin, for your hair, for your cleaning products, and of course, your food. We all know how important it is. I know how important it is. I know how poorly my body does with toxins. I know my liver needs all the support it can get 100% of the time. And so to remove toxins is the easiest way to do so. However, there are just some things where the toxic product works better. I hate to say it. I know that's not something that a lot of holistic nutritionists would say or anybody in this holistic health world would ever say, but I'm admitting it right here, right now. There are some products where I still use the toxic version, one of them being dry shampoo. It smells terrible. Every single time I spray it on my head, I cough because the smell is so bad and I'm very, very sensitive to any scents that are chemically derived. So, but still, it's not enough for me to not use this product. My hair does way better with dry shampoo that is toxic. And I've used a lot of natural ones. I still use them sometimes. I think they're great and they do work to some degree, but my hair is very finicky and it just, the toxic ones work better, even though it makes me cough every single time. Luckily, I only use it maybe once a month at most. And there are unfortunately some cleaning products that are better when they're toxic. Again, I hate to say it, and 90% of the cleaning products I use are I make from home with vinegar and water and essential oils, but sometimes I just need the toxic stuff. And again, it smells terrible. I hate it. It's terrible for my skin. I use gloves, but it works. And I need that heavy duty stuff. Every once in a while, chemicals just do the trick. I hate to admit it. Again, something I'm afraid to tell you, but I'm a real person. And if you're someone who's trying to clean up the toxins in your life, but you have some sneaking in still and you don't know what to do and you feel bad about it, it's okay. I'm just here to tell you it's okay. We're all trying our best. Every little bit helps. It's all good. Next one, I think this comes at a really good time right now, which is that I stop doing pretty much all stress relieving techniques when I get stressed. Again, how many times in the past 94 episodes have we talked about stress and the role that it's playing in our health issues and how important it is to find those stressors and do what you can to relieve stress in your own life? every day, all day. I preach it hardcore. 
However, in my own life, when things start hitting the fan and life gets tough, I stop. It's a terrible thing. I don't want to do it, but I get out of my routine. I think so much of what we can do as far as stress relief works on routine every morning, waking up and meditating before you have your coffee. And then at night you go for a walk or you take a bath. And then when life gets disrupted, which mine is right now, and I think you all agree if you've ever had uh, construction take over half your house, it is super disruptive and you have absolutely no schedule, no routine, everything's out the window. And when that happens, so do your stress relieving techniques quite often. And this is the case for me. I am very much aware of it and I try really hard. I'm still trying. I'm making an effort. I'm even putting it in my calendar to meditate, putting it in my calendar to go to yoga, to really try to remain calm and have some of those benefits of the stress relief when I need it most. And I don't think I'm alone there. I think a lot of us let those things that are really good for us slide out the window when things hit the fan. For a lot of people, it's their diet too. For me, luckily, I love my diet so much. I love the foods that I eat. I don't feel restricted at all. I'm very intuitive with it all. So that really hasn't changed at all. It's very much still my go-to is just eating whatever, basically. But 99% of the time, that's healthy, nutrient-dense foods because that's just what I love. But I see it a lot. And I just want you all to know, I see it, I recognize it, and it's okay. You are normal. We are normal. We're all in this together. It's part of the process. Again, the fact that you can see that, can recognize it, and make teeny little changes to help, just little stuff to help you get back there, is where the real transformation has happened, that we don't let ourselves get too out of control, that we still recognize what we quote unquote should be doing that we're not doing. It's part of the process. And every time you go through something stressful, it will get easier and easier for you to call up those stress relieving techniques when you need it most. I just want you all to know I'm going through it right now. And I get you, even though I preach the opposite, I still do it sometimes. Speaking of diet and being intuitive, This next one's tough. This is actually what really prompted me to do this whole podcast episode because I really am afraid to tell you that I have been out of ketosis way more than I've been in over the past few months. And not only that, but I've been feeling really good not being in ketosis. Again, I was afraid to tell you this because it is the Keto for Women show because I am a keto nutritionist and I help women every day get in and stay in ketosis, but also because some of the keto community is rough. They do not want to hear that anybody that has been in their community is now not in it, is now not part of it. And they get down on you. They think you're doing something wrong. They think all of a sudden your health has gone downhill and you're just lost 10 years off your life because you started eating sweet potatoes again. And that scares me. I mean, I have to be honest, I guess here's not one that was on my list, but I'm just going to share it because, hey, I'm all about honesty right here, right now. And always, as you know, but the keto community kind of scares me. It's very hard to be a health practitioner in a strong diet community. It is really, really hard. So when I found keto myself for my own health issues and had such amazing success and then turned that into a place where I could help other women with their health and things they had been going through, it didn't ever occur to me that it would be an issue if I stopped being keto or if I decided to start having more carbohydrates later on in this journey. And that's where I'm at now. And I have been honestly kind of hiding it in a way. I don't think that any of you who follow me on Instagram think I really have been trying to leave out the sweet potatoes or the idea that I have a very balanced approach to my keto plate. But I haven't really talked about it that much. And I have sometimes thought twice about posting things or sharing things because they have carbs and because the keto community is the way it is. And it's not bad. It's just a diet industry. 
and I'm a health practitioner. So there's a big difference there. And I now know what is right for me and my health and this journey that I'm on. And we're all on a journey, every single one of us, and it changes every day. You know that is something I feel very strongly about. And it's okay if keto is no longer part of your journey or not right for now or something you want to experiment going in and out of. That's all okay. That's all up to you. And it's no one else's place to say what's best for you at each moment of your journey. And that's how it is for me. It all came about a few months ago where I just realized that I was really craving sweet potatoes and plantains and white potatoes, white rice. I was kind of just having cravings for those things. And I took that as a sign. I didn't take that as, oh my gosh, my blood sugar's all over the place. Now carbs sound good. I took that as a sign that maybe my body actually needs carbs. So that in addition to me really ramping up my workouts and changing those up and doing some heavy lifting that I hadn't done in a while, working out quite often because I had the energy to, it led me to understand that I truly did need this additional glucose to spark those workouts and to help me get through them. And then from there, being fat adapted, I could continue burning fat as fuel during other parts of the day or less intense workouts, etc. That's how it started. And then I realized I was starting to feel really good. I was sleeping better than I had in a long time. My digestion improved. My workouts got really great. And I actually shed some puffiness that I was still holding on to. I don't want to call it weight. I don't think it was. I think it was actually just maybe inflammation or some sort of food sensitivity, something where when I started eating more carbohydrates and dialing back my fat, that lifted. So all of these things were just me seeing that it was time for me to step out of ketosis and add in these additional sources of real food carbohydrates. This was just an intuitive process. And, you know, it could be that tomorrow I stop wanting those sweet potatoes and plantains and berries and bananas, and I want to have more fat. And then I do that and it makes me feel really good and I start having these things that improve and then I know it's time to get back into ketosis. I'm such an intuitive eater at this point and I'm feeling so good doing so that it really was hard for me to not share this with you because it meant that I wasn't keto. But then as I thought about it, I realized there's so many people out there doing the same thing. For instance, Melissa Hartwig, who is the founder of Whole30, she doesn't eat Whole30 every single day of her life, but she can still teach the Whole30 approach. There are many paleo influencers and nutritionists that don't eat paleo every single day of their life, but they can still teach paleo. So I realized that I have a place here still. Even though that's not something I'm currently doing, keto is still something I believe in. I credit for giving me my health. I see every day changing people's lives. I still believe it. I still want to teach it. It's still really important to my story. But it's okay if I'm not keto right now and I'm finding more health and more joy in my carbs. It's so great, actually, to be able to burn both glucose and fat for fuel whenever I want. I'm really, really enjoying that. I have exciting news coming from our friends over at Rasa. I know a lot of you are already on the Rasa train, but for those of you who haven't tried it yet, Rasa coffee is a coffee alternative that's made of adaptogens with no caffeine. These adaptogens are super herbs. They help you combat and cope with stress while also providing a natural and healthy energy boost. The biggest question I get about Rasa is does it taste like coffee or what does it taste like if it doesn't taste like coffee? And I will tell you, no, it doesn't taste like coffee, but it does still provide that hearty, robust, earthy, warm beverage that you want in the morning when you wake up. I know that's kind of the first thing I crave when I wake up. And Rasa does it for me without the caffeine or the jittery feeling that comes with it. The cool thing is that now Rasa has come out with two new flavors and you are going to want to get your hands on them. First, there's the Cacao Rasa. This is a blend of the original Rasa with cacao beans. The combo creates a rich chocolatey beverage that is so good and it's great as a mid-afternoon pick-me-up. 
has less than five milligrams of caffeine. So it makes for a very non-stimulating coffee alternative that you can have at any time throughout the day. And it's packed with those great adaptogens and antioxidants. I've been whipping mine up with some coconut cream in the middle of a chilly day, and it really hits the spot for that little mid-afternoon treat. But keep in mind, there's no sweetener at all, which is great for us keto ladies. And that means it gives you that chocolatey flavor without the sweetness. You guys are going to love it. It's also still going to do all those same great benefits to support your adrenals and your stress response while giving you a little bit of a boost midday. Then there's the Dirty Rasa, which contains a little bit of organic, fair trade, women grown and operated coffee mixed in with their original Rasa. This does have a little bit of caffeine for those days when you just need a little extra pizzazz in your day and also great for those looking to slowly wean themselves off of caffeine or just drink a little bit less caffeine. It's kind of Rasa's idea of a half-calf situation, but again, you're getting those adaptogens, you're getting that health health benefit of the original Rasa at the same time. Now, I've actually been mixing both of the two flavors together as my morning pick-me-up, and I have to say it is so yummy. You've got to try it, especially blended with some healthy fats like coconut cream, ghee, coconut oil, MCT oil. Blend that up. It will really hit the spot, whether it's in the morning or maybe even mid-afternoon. Our friends over at Rasa, they love us here at Keto for Women, which means they're giving us 20% off of your order when you go to wearerasa.com. Use the coupon code KETO, the number four women, and you will get 20% off your order. Again, that's wearerasa, R-A-S-A, dot com. Use the coupon code KETO, the number four women, and get 20% off your order over on their website. A huge thanks to Rasa for helping this show come to air and for that amazing deal they're giving to all of us. Last one about me. I think keto is a stepping stone for me to do something even greater. As I mentioned, just talking about the keto community, It's a diet community where I am trying to find a place with my holistic healing approach and really looking at the whole picture. And what keto has done for me is to help me realize my bigger picture, my bigger why of why I'm here in this keto community. Yes, it's to help women do keto right. That's why we've had 94 episodes of the Keto for Women show. But there's also something bigger going on here. There's something undeniable that I am seeing with working now over 1,200 women have done the Fat Burning Female Project. Over 350 women have done the self-study. I'm seeing these trends that I can't deny, things that are still not working for you, things that need to be approached differently that we need to actually pay attention to. We can't just look at the food on our plate anymore. And I feel like that is my calling. I feel like I am here in this diet community to open your eyes a little bit. So I'm really excited for that. That is the future of me and my business and my time here in the keto community. My approach here on Keto for Women, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, it's all for this bigger purpose that I'm just now realizing And yes, I was afraid to tell you because I don't want you to think I'm selling out on keto, that I'm not going to teach keto anymore. Keto is sticking around in my life and my business and what I love to teach, but I'm adding on. And it's something that we all need regardless of what we're doing with our diet. We're all going to need it. So It's opening up another door for me, somewhere else to step into so I can have a foot in keto and a foot into something deeper. Of course, I'm leading you on. I'm not telling you what I'm talking about. That's for me to brainstorm over the next five weeks, and I'll share more when I return, I promise. All right, things about you that I've been afraid to tell you. And actually, I don't think I've been afraid to tell you because I've told you many times here on the show, but I guess I've been afraid to tell you as bluntly as I'm going to tell you today. So I'm taking off the nice 
polite version of Sean. And we're going to do it a little bit more seriously because I want you to take me seriously. The first one is that I think you're trying too hard. You are so wrapped up in your diet that you cannot see beyond it. You're failing because you're trying too hard. You're self-sabotaging because you're trying too hard. You're not seeing results because you're trying too hard. You can't stick with it because you're trying too hard. You're not losing weight. You're not experiencing the benefits, all of this, because you are so wrapped up in it. You are trying so hard. And the dedication is admirable. I think that's great that you are focused on healthy eating. But a big part about healthy eating is not obsessing over your plate of food. Obsession in general is not healthy, is not ever deemed as healthy. So why would it be that way when you are looking at the food on your plate? So let's take it back to basics. And again, this is the advice I give you on almost every episode. Take it back a notch. Get back to the basics. Eat real food. Make that your number one priority and lift your head up from the plate. Go experience your life. Go find out more about you and your body. See how you feel, not just what the app says. Just don't forget what's actually important in this life, which is not that you do keto perfectly that you eat the exact right macronutrients every single day. What's important is that you fuel your body with real food. You get the nutrients that you need to feel great and you go live your life. That's what I want to see you do. Right on the heels of this, very similar. I think many of you are missing the bigger picture. I think we're focusing on diet because it's easy because it's way easier to manipulate our plate of food when things aren't going well than to look deeper, than to really, truly take a hard look at your body and your life and your thoughts and change those. Instead, we can just put one less scoop of fat on our plate and see if that works. But we're missing the bigger picture. And the longer you ignore it, the worse it's going to get and the harder it is to dig yourself out. So starting now, you are going to focus on the bigger picture. You're going to stop thinking small. You're going to stop being afraid and you're going to start digging in. Some of the stuff you may not have ever even considered. Yeah, maybe it is your hormones or your gut or your food sensitivities, your inflammation. It could be something like that. And if that's the case, start digging, start doing it and stop obsessing over every single thing you put on your plate because that's easy and because you don't want to deal with the bigger stuff. You've got to do it. Get your head in right now and do it. But it may also be that you need to start thinking outside the box. What are your thoughts? What are you saying to yourself? What are some things you're still holding on to? Some beliefs or stories about your body, your health, fat versus skinny. What are these stories that you are coming up with? And are they actually true? I can tell you they're not. But what can you do to release those stories to understand that they are just stories and not truth. Again, super deep stuff. I know I'm kind of getting into the thick of it and not something I can teach you right here, right now, although I will be planning to teach this very soon, but start just considering it. Understand that there's more going on if you are having trouble with your weight, with your health, with getting everything figured out, and you're doing what you think is everything right with the food you're putting on your plate, how much food you're eating, how much you're exercising or moving, you're doing all that stuff right and nothing's falling into place, please start looking outside the box. I talk about this all the time. As I said, I'm just going to say it with a little more enthusiasm today because I'm just feeling spicy. All right, next one about you. I think the stress of keto is making you worse. Again, I think keto is great for a lot of people. I think the stress that comes with keto is not great for a lot of people. And even if you go through something like the Fat Burning Female Project where you know the actual diet change isn't causing stress on your body, the mental stress of being keto, when you're not seeing results as quickly as you want, when it's not the quick fix you thought it would be, when you start feeling worse and you don't know why, 
just there's so much wrapped up into this in our heads that we create into stress beyond just like, I'm going to start producing ketones and live my life. The stress that you are putting your body under just by trying to figure out this keto thing is probably worse than you just not doing keto. Yeah, I said it. It's terrible of me to say in this keto community. But if you're stressing out about it, it's not going to do you any favors. I'd much rather you focus on just eating real food, getting away from the packaged processed crap that is everywhere all over the place right now and get some good quality meats, some good veggies, have some fruit, have some sweet potatoes, some plantains, some rice, some beans. I don't care, but just eat something that mother nature created and not the nearest Nabisco factory, and I think we're in good shape. So again, if keto is stressing you out, it's not a good time. And if you think that you can be less stressed and more balanced and eat more intuitively based on your body by not trying to follow keto, please do that. Please do that. Maybe you can approach it at a different time when you can come at it with a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more intuition and try it then. But now is not a good time and you're stressing yourself out and that stress is going to keep you from feeling anything that you want to feel with keto. So not worth it. Last one about you is the harsh reality that yes, I have been very afraid to tell you, you might not ever lose weight. You just might not. I hate telling you this. I hate being the person that's going to tell you this, but it's true for any number of reasons. Maybe it's because your body is legitimately happy where it's at. And yes, it can be happy while still being quote unquote overweight. There are plenty of influencers out there who it might actually be good for you to follow who are in the health at every size campaign. You could even just search that hashtag if this is something that you want to explore more for you, health at every size. And check those ladies out because it really is true. You can be healthy and not be skinny. You absolutely can. There are plenty of people out there. And I would actually say it is much easier to maintain your health with a little bit of extra weight than it is to maintain your health while being underweight. So keep that in mind. Skinniness does not equal healthy. A lower weight on the scale does not equal healthy. None of that equates to health except your body actually being balanced and happy. That's what makes you healthy. So if you are feeling really good, you have so much good stuff going on with your health, everything feels really balanced out, you're having awesome menstrual cycles, you have so much energy, you sleep great, your workouts are awesome, but you're not losing weight, you just might not ever lose weight. You might need to embrace the health at every size. Now, something that I think is actually really interesting is If I say that to you and you embrace that and you think, okay, well, I don't need to lose weight anymore. I'm healthy. I'm not going to try anymore. This is just where I'm going to know my body is happiest and I'm going to live my life. How does that feel? Does that make you feel a little bit relieved? You don't have to try to lose weight for your entire life. You can be happy and healthy right where you are. That sounds relieving to me. I know when I went through this process with myself and I told myself those words, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I didn't have to keep digging and trying and efforting. I could just be. I could just be happy. I could just live my life. I could just find some really cute clothes at the size I was at and just get over it. And that really gives a sense of relief. And I hope you feel that to some degree when I say those words to you. I know it's hard to hear. That won't change. But even if there is a glimmer of something that comes out of that thought, move with that. If it's relief, go there. Focus on that and it will help the process. Now, if you are still struggling and you're not feeling healthy, 
and happy and you're not losing weight, then that's a different story and you need to focus on getting healthy and then see what happens to your body composition. It may change. It may not. You may also be part of this health at every size club. And that's cool too, but you need to get there first. You need to know that health is on your side before you know whether that's going to be a part of your life or not. There's also this case that I do want to touch on again, something I'm afraid to tell you is that your metabolism may be damaged beyond repair. Now, I don't have any scientific evidence that this does or does not happen to people. This is just what I have seen in my own kind of studying, I guess you'll say, of all the women that I've worked with one-on-one and in group class. I think there is a real possibility that the years and years and years and years of abuse as far as dieting and restricting and controlling goes with your diet trends and what we call diet hopping over here at Sean Minor Health. When that happens to a certain degree for a certain period of time, it may not totally repair itself. And if it does, it may take a long time. Obviously, you may have been following a diet for 20 years. So to expect your metabolism to bounce back in a month, not reality. It may take 10 years to bounce back and it may not at all. Again, I don't know this for sure, but I do see it. I do see the case where those that have done these crazy strict 800 calorie a day diets with the shakes and the HCG and all this stuff, they have a harder time bouncing back. And weight loss is very, very challenging. And it has to do with the metabolic capacity. And it might be that it doesn't ever repair itself to the degree necessary, or it takes a longer time. Yes, I hate telling you this, I'm afraid to tell you this, but I'm saying it anyways. If this is the case for you and you can see yourself in what I'm saying right now where you've diet hopped for a long period of time, you've noticed that your metabolism is not what it used to be, it's not bouncing back like you expected it to, you may just need to consider that this is going to take a while. It's going to be a longer journey than you want. But that does not mean that you stop focusing on it, stop caring, go to the nearest ice cream store and eat all of the ice cream. It means that you focus on your health. It means that you get back to finding out, again, the bigger picture. So we are now approaching this with a bigger picture, which means looking at all the things. And I have found, too, there to be a pretty big correlation between those women who have dieted for 20 years, tried XYZ everything, and what's going on in their head. What have they been told about themselves, even in childhood, about their bodies, about dieting, about what skinny means? You have to go back to those stories and really look at that. That's how you can speed up this process and get that metabolism humming a little bit quicker. We've got to start looking at the bigger picture. It goes back to the other one I just mentioned. But yes, the end result here is that you might not ever lose weight or it may take way longer than you thought. So let's chill out on it, which again, big message I share all the time and look for something deeper or just acknowledge that and let it go and feel that relief and move on with your life. All right, last thing I'm afraid to tell you, and it has to do with the podcast. Actually, it's not really something I'm super afraid to tell you, but I did hesitate when deciding how to take the Keto for Women show, what direction to go over the next 100 episodes. And it's already kind of been happening with the podcast even before we reach episode 100. And that is that I won't be talking only about keto on this podcast moving forward. Again, I'm a little scared of the keto community. I've gotten some bad reviews because I don't only talk about keto on the Keto for Women show because people want to hear about keto. And the cool thing is that there are so many great podcasts out there that are only talking about keto and are mainly talking about it to women. So that's really nice. And I feel more comfortable taking a turn here on the Keto for Women show. It doesn't mean that we won't be talking about keto. Keto is a huge piece to the puzzle for so many of you when finding that true health that you're looking for. 
but it is just one piece. And you all know that I believe that wholeheartedly. Keto is great as a starting point. It really is a place to get you feeling better and more like yourself again. But here on KFW, we want more than that. We want to get to our best self. We want to feel as healthy as we ever have. We want our future health to be top notch so we can age gracefully and dodge possible health issues down the road. That's what I want to do here for you. Yes, keto will be part of it. We will also be talking about all the other pieces to the puzzle, our mindset, our stress, our hormones, our gut health issues, our toxicity, our negative thought patterns, our relationships. Nothing is off limits here on Keto for Women. We just are approaching it knowing that keto is the baseline. Keto is the starting point. And from here, what do we do to continue to get healthy so that we can feel the results, we can see the results, and we can feel better than we ever have? And really, it doesn't stop. It's a continuous list of possible things we need to consider, possible pieces of the puzzle. And there is nothing I love more than empowering you all to understand more about your health, your life, your environment, all the things we talk about here. I love it so much. And it is going to include more than just keto coming up in the next 100 episodes of the Keto for Women show. So if you are someone that only wants to hear about keto, there are plenty of other podcasts that do that that I highly recommend. And you can pop into the episodes here on KFW when it is a keto topic. But also keep in mind that there may be a point when you realize that keto isn't everything and that you do need to explore more about your health. And when that time comes, head back to the Keto for Women show because we'll be talking about it over here. All right, that is it. That is my things I'm afraid to tell you. I hope, like I mentioned at the beginning, that more than anything else right now, you feel that I am human, that I have your back, that I understand where you're coming from. I understand when you have hardships and concerns and when things aren't going well and you can't fit it all in and there's things that you know you should be doing, but you're not doing them. I get it. I'm the same way. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. We're all in this together. And I can't wait to continue to empower you and teach you and share with you in the next 100 episodes of the Keto for Women show. It's going to be really fun. And I can guarantee that by episode 200, you are going to know so much about your body, your environment, your relationships, everything you need to know to really feel good about your health journey. That's my goal here. That will be my goal moving forward. And I am super excited. Like I said, I'll be back in episode 100. I will miss you for the next five weeks. And I will still be sharing all the things over on my social media, especially with those Instagram and Facebook stories. So make sure you check those out. uh, If you want to know what I'm doing behind the scenes during my five week break, it's not going to be a break. I'm just going to be doing something different for a little bit, but I'll share with you over there. So make sure to follow me. I'm Sean Miner over at Instagram and Sean Miner Health over on Facebook. And of course, I'll still be sharing recipes and tips and lists and all the things that I do via email. So if we're not pen pals yet, get on that. I promise I'm not an annoying emailer. It's just like a few a month at most with actual good information that's free, even better. Head over to my website, seanminer.com to get signed up for that so we can still stay in touch via email over the next five weeks. And don't forget, I'm still going to have all these really awesome past episodes, my best of things you are definitely going to want to listen to again to get some new info that you just didn't hear last time. It happens to all of us. So be on the lookout next week for the first of the best of series of Keto for Women. All right, everybody. Take care. Talk soon.